Hello, Rotters. Um, usually a video at the start of an episode like this denotes an apology. Yeah, it's another one. Um, but this time it's for a technical fuck up on my part. Um, we recorded on video this week. And uh, despite it literally being the last thing that I wanted to do, I deleted some of the videos as, uh, after we recorded them, which means that for this week's episode on the Schooner Scorer, We've got no video for the intro, but we do have video for the main bit. Uh, there won't be video next week, but there will be video the week after. All a very long and complex way of saying no video this week uh, for the intro, but main part, the main bulk of the episode has got video on it. Um, as and when we develop our IT skills beyond that of a 75-year-old person who was evacuated during World War II, there will be video for every episode. We're getting a new camera uh, soon. So big apologies. Uh, big hugs and big kisses, as always, from us. Uh, no video for this week's intro, but video for the main bit. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Screen Rock Podcast, the podcast where we discuss the weirdest and worst content that's been written on our screens and indeed our minds. And I'm extending the intro. Uh, big shout out to everyone who listens. Big shout out to everyone who subscribes. Big shout out to all the patrons who aren't patrons yet, but will be one day. And most importantly, a big shout out to all the women who listen, who are some of the most gorgeous and sexy women in the world. Big wink from us. Big kiss when we see you. How are you? <laughs> we've been trailing he, he's been trailing a big new intro and i was worried we were going to have some kind of joe budden style like rave horns and all of that kind of thing again. you've been listening to budden again yeah it rots my brain that's when you know i think you're in a bad place <laughs> yeah yeah how yeah. much budden is he consuming on a weekly you know, basis four hours long i uh, yeah i'm aware I'm, I'm i'm losing work to complete <laughs> budden Sorry, I can't I'm do the skin, gig tonight. I'm skin. I can't fucking pay the rent because I haven't been to work in <laughs> Too a week. Too much trying to finish a button. Sorry. Um, yeah, new intro. Um, I like it. Yeah, I think it's nice. I, I, like high energy. I'm sick of the welcome to the podcast. Podcast with podcast, mm. podcast, podcast, podcast. Yeah, yeah. It's like getting loud, hard, make it clear. And I, 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 I you know, let's 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 let the listener know this is our second time trying to record this episode. Cause we've we haven't got cables long enough to power the up the or something. Machine. But the first time around, I didn't do the um, big kiss when we see you. No. For and the ladies. Yeah, so in a way, there's probably some kind of divine intervention to make us do the intro again, because I wouldn't have been able to, to sleep tonight if you'd not said a big kiss and a big wink to the ladies. I'm going to give them all a big kiss when I see them. Yeah, all, they're, they're, all, they're, all two of them. They're, 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 uh, I was just thinking, I was like, there are at least two women who've said that they've bought tickets to the live show. Really? Yeah. Who we yeah. don't know personally? Or? Um, I don't know those women personally. I've okay. never met them before in my life. <laughs> in, um, your, in your life? <laughs> but, you know, they're, they're, they're online, as we all are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you're Social back. commentary. You're I'm back, back from holiday. You're back from holiday. Jake's just, been away. We're talking about the omelette man uh, at yeah. the All Inclusive. You've, you've been all past. inclusive in. You've been, well, you were Greece, weren't you? Yeah, really interesting holidays for me because obviously it's like very difficult to just be with my thoughts for long periods of time. Like my whole life is really a battle to avoid that as far as possible. But the whole point of the holiday is that just relax, just chill out, read a book or whatever. So obviously my brain is just looking for things to be annoyed about. Is there some loud music I can complain about? <laughs> yeah. Are there some teenagers I can report to the management? Um, Mate, and you're so ready to be a dad. <laughs> you're so ready. Do you think that's it? Yeah, you're, you're really there. This is this is it. This, this is, is it. I'm looking on with pride at this. I'm yeah, like, yes, that's my yes, boy. This is it. Um, but no, it was a wonderful time. Uh, watch the two England games out there. Really, uh, that's big... a touch, man. Well, but a big hit with the misses on the last night of the holiday when we take two hours out of the kind of staring into the Adriatic to instead stare at a screen with the worst football match on it I've Which ever seen, it? the Denmark game. Oh, and God. Even at the end of it, she was like so deflated. <laughs> it's just that we just spent two hours inside <laughs> so we could watch that. What time was it? Your time? It was like, that one was like eight o'clock our time. So it was like eight oh, till but ten yeah, but or something like that. This time of year, it's still, it's still sunny at that time. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was, this it, is my fucking obsession with the sun. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, June, Greece, yes, eight o'clock, <laughs> 
that's still warm. That's still warm. Uh, yeah, so it was like 30 degrees outside, and we're sat in the restaurant, me drinking little beers, shouting about Trent Alexander Arnold, which is just not what you want. You, 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 you know, you say that game was bad. Did you watch that Hungary Scotland game? Yeah, that was the worst game of football I've ever seen. Was, did you see that tweet that was like, it was no. like this Millwall fan? It was like, if anyone wants to know what it's like to be a Millwall fan, it's watching this game 38 times a season on cocaine. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was uh, it was amazing at the end. Like Andy Robertson, whose like whole vibe as captain of Scotland and like Liverpool player is like he's a mad cunt, right? That's yeah, his thing. Yeah. He runs yeah. up and down. He does. Like... They all sort of do that a bit. It's like competitive. Like I'm a fucking legend. It's like when Kieran Tierney turns up with a fucking Tesco bag. It's like, mm, yeah, yeah, nice yeah, one, yeah, 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 yeah. One hundred twenty five. And then a week. and then it's like their whole vibe is like no Scotland, no party. Yeah, and then yeah. at the end, Andy Robertson's just like there. We've let everybody down. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real real big party you've put on here. <laughs> <laughs> we should address, I mean, Euros related, we should address what we're wearing. For people that oh, are yeah. listening, you can't see this, but for people that are watching on YouTube or, or on a reel, you, you'll be able to see that Jacob and I are wearing matching England home shirts. England home shirts, numbers on the front. Numbers on the front yours, and the back. You're seven, I'm ten. Yeah. Saka and Jude, names on the back. Surname spelt correctly. <laughs> yeah, which is amazing. Amazing, amazing. So basically, we have to shout out Ben and Shane, two two listeners, uh, who they came to my tour show in Brighton, and Jake yeah. was there, and then they were like, "Oh, mate, that was good. We want to come again." They were supposed to come um, to Reading. I had to cancel my Reading tour show. Um, anyone, I know there was another a few more listeners who, who were going to come to that. Do apologise. Family weren't well, um, but then Ben and Shane managed to make it to another gig that I was doing in Brighton. And brought these for us. Unbelievable. So thankful. Thanks, Ben and Shane. Massively appreciate it. Fucking legend. What I think I will say, though, is to the rest of the listeners, what have you done for us lately? Well, I'll tell you what. (laughs) Any of you fucking freeloaders, when we do the Patreon in a few weeks, and it's coming soon, any of you who are like, ooh, five pounds a month, these guys got us fucking England shirts. Yeah. Yeah. You've had had a year's worth of free entertainment, yeah? If that's Netflix, how much would you spend? I don't know. (laughs) Point is, that, no, but shout out to Ben and Shane. Shout out to Paul as well. Geezer called Paul, mm-hmm. who on one of these episodes a couple of weeks ago, um, I said that I, I, I mentioned how I've helped people with best man speeches in the past. Yeah. Paul gave me a shout. It was like, look, I've got a speech coming up. Would you, you know, have a little look? Blah, blah, blah. Did that. Paul blessed me with a brand new electro bong. Unbelievable. Yeah. The, li- the best great. listeners in the world. It's great. I t- uh, did, this is how good the electro bong that Paul sorted me out with was. Uh, I was I was downstairs on my own, you know, missus and kids upstairs asleep, and I was, you know, puffing on my bong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seeing around corners. Over them. I haven't had one in ages because I broke the others, but I, I was having a great time. And then in the morning, Lana came downstairs. <laughs> I'd obviously got the munchies. Right. right? I, I couldn't remember this whatsoever. She came down. I was pissed as well. She came down the <laughs> the next morning, and we got like a little box of like crackers, you know, like like Jacob's crackers yeah, that yeah. we keep in the cupboard. I'd left a fucking great big box and a great big lump of mature cheddar <laughs> in the crackers box <laughs> in the cupboard, and this is like it's a heat wave at the moment, so it's like twenty eight degree heat, and this bit of fucking cheddar is like sweating like Ray Winston at the start of Sexy <laughs> Beast. So Leave that, Lars, darling. I'm saving that for later. She's like, Jakey, what were you doing last night? I was like, nothing, baby. I was in bed. She said, like, what happened to the cheddar? I was like, we had more cheddar. Get off. <laughs> so good there. So, yeah, shout out, oh, to incredible. The, shout out to the boy. Shout out to everyone who gets in touch. And, um, yeah, best Yeah, drop us, a, drop us a review on Spotify if it's a good one. <laughs> Keep sending us Thanks your messages. Thanks for everything you do. Now do some more, is yeah, what yeah. you just said. I need a new food pres- processor. So if anyone wants <laughs> to buy me one of those, just send it, send it along. <laughs> <laughs> well, that podcast, did it make any money? No, but I've always got a New England shirt on and I'm stoned out my fucking box 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get into things. Well, let, let's. Let, is there any admin? <clears throat> First of all, um, I, I used to be much hotter on promoting this, and then I, s- <laughs> I forgot for a few episodes, and now I've run out of the stuff they send me, so I need to promote yeah, it no, again. Let's get back on that. Dense. Then. If you want to read great hair, if you want to stop male pattern baldness, check out Dense. D E N S E. Um, it's great stuff. All topical, so no side effects. As my fucking balls shrink into my body. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It is good. Um, and uh, Jacob Thirty, you get thirty percent off discount. Fuck, what a discount that is. That's what a great. discount. What else have we got? To Live show, eighth of August. I think we're down to like the last three or four tickets or yeah, something yeah, like that. Proper, so jump proper. on those if you We've want been to saying, we, we have been saying for weeks, we're like, there's a handful left. People could be like, this left just fucking lying. <laughs> Gen- genuinely is a handful left. But I think what they might be able to do is they'll release some holds or something. I don't really understand yeah, yeah, how it yeah. works. Um, we need to tell them about the live show. Do we? Yeah. What are we telling them? 
Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Go yeah. on then. Uh, <laughs> Josh Pugh has had to cancel. So Cook's pulled out. <laughs> yeah. Un- unfortunately, Josh Pugh has had to pull out the live show. Uh, it's he is taking a break from the industry, he, and I he, he he told me this, and I was like, "Do you mind if we tell our listeners that?" And he was like, "Yeah, yeah, please do." He's taking a break from the industry. He wants to take a, he's he's taking a bit of time away from comedy. Fair yeah, play, isn't it? yeah, killing it, Josh. I, I mean, say, that's when you know you've made it when you can stop. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, he's he's taking a big old. Break what I wouldn't give to take a break from this do, podcast. I do I, well. I do wonder. Like he he told me that, and it's like come August when he's supposed to be doing our podcast, he's going to be like announcing tours. He's going to be on every TV <laughs> show. Okay? It's like, yeah, it's like, I wouldn't fucking... begrudge him that. I wouldn't no, begrudge but, him. No, so Josh can't make it, but we've got we've got another guest lined up. We've got. We've got other guests on top of that. There's an awful lot planned, so... We'll, we'll reconfirm if, those if, guests. If, if anyone was just like... And I don't think this was the case, but if anyone was just like, oh, I was just there to see Josh Pugh, A, you get a fucking life, and B, <laughs> you can have a refund if you really want. No, you can't. No, no you can't. Fuck off. But no, no, I don't know. We you, could have waited until the day before and broken the news. Yeah, you, no, you probably can. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it matters. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, what's that? Live show done. Dent's done. Uh, I'm on tour. If you want to come see me on tour, I'll be doing the Park Theatre in London again, 24th of November. Jake will be there again. But don't let that put um, you off. <laughs> and we're going to have some more news about um, us doing live stuff very soon. Oh, yeah. We've got another good live announcement coming. We've got, well, we might have two. Two? There's lo- loads of stuff happening. Anyway. That's all the admin. Let's get into this week. Uh, this So this is a much um, requested topic. Oh, big time. And this is one that you know a bit more about than I do. Yeah, as much as there is to know about this dreadful, dreadful man, I know. And um, I think, uh, yeah, this this is, is going to be someone that excites a lot of strong emotions, I think. So I'm excited really? to talk about him. Oh, yeah. mate. All right. Well, okay. Well, look, look, spreadsheet lads at the ready. Um, because from what you just said, I've got a vague idea of where this is going to go. <laughs> yeah. All right, sweet. So this week we are talking about the schooner scorer. Oi, get on this, please. The schooner scorer is a serial killer waiting to be caught. <laughs> really? Now, where to start with this guy? So there are, there are phases of these people, right? Where when we did uh, Davis Clark, mm-hmm. he was still just like a bloke yeah. that was getting viral traction. Yeah. And I think I was first alerted to the scorer, schooner scorer, the scorer schooner, the schooner scorer when he was on like 10k followers. I think he's down on like 80 or something like that. Huh. But there are no articles online as to like who is this guy and where did he come from. So he still has that vibe of like a terrorist that's popped up <laughs> in like rural Peru or something and is fighting the government from his village. <laughs> and it's like no one knows where he came from. The schooner scorer just emerged from Clapham, fully formed. <laughs> from Clapham as well. Yeah. Cool. Well, okay. Uh, now, I, I know very little about this guy. So I'm gonna, like, in the same way the audience might, I'm going to need you to tell me as much as you can about who this fellow so is. So the schooner scorer, he does these videos. You'll have seen them. They pop up online. And his whole thing is that he's scoring a beer. It's very hard to explain. He's scoring a beer. And he does this little bit at the top, which I'm very ashamed to say that I can do off the, off, off the top of my head, where he goes, schooner scorer here, 60 second snippet scoring a schooner, right? And that's what he does. <laughs> and I, yes, I have been walking around my house saying that. And yes, my <laughs> wife is threatening to divorce me. And he does that. And then he, ra- he rates this beer. He'll drink the beer. He'll do it. In, and then he goes one sip, one score, clinks the glass on the camera. And then downs it. And his whole thing is that a schooner, I think we've discussed schooners on here before, like two thirds yeah, yeah. of a pint. Now, he does it, but it's so weird because you'd think, well, the point is maybe he's trying fancy beers and like he's going to test them and tell you what it's about. But he'll do, as we'll see in a minute, he'll do any beer at any pub, the worst pubs in the world. He'll do any lager. He leaves a little bit off the top. And it's all just this very bizarre Clapham aesthetic where he's got like, Kind of linen shirts on, like undone, three buttons down, gilet on, and he's northern, but he's got a kind of placeless accent, if you know what I mean. Which is always like that means he's posh. That means he's posh. Yeah, that means he's posh. So I've been I've been thinking about this, and it's like my missus is posh, mm-hmm. and she's from Birmingham, but it sounds like she's from the six o'clock news. That's what, <laughs> like that's how you know. 
That's how you know. There was a bloke I met first day at uni, and he was like, I'm from Manchester, and he sounded like me. And I was like, you're not fucking do, from do you know? Do you know the, the real ones are Scots? That's Scots. how you get it, yeah. You, you get Scots sometimes, it's like, hi, I'm from Scotland, and you're like... Are you? <laughs> Usually comedians. That means you own Scotland. Oh, you're from Edinburgh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But then, like, like Ian Sterling, he's from Edinburgh. Okay, so he, he's, he's proper got, Edinburgh. He's, yeah, Edinburgh, Ian Sterling. That's I think he listens, it. actually. We have Does to be he? careful. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but no, uh, yeah, I, they, they, you do get that. And it, it is a very telltale sign of money. Do you know what I love is that the Scots, they hate the English, but they hate people from Edinburgh even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's because... I, mean, I don't want to talk too much about Edinburgh, but like, it's, it's, it's been... come and see Jacob's show August twenty. 20- <laughs> no, I don't. No, I can't believe I'm fucking doing that. I might, I might, I might pull that actually. I genuinely might pull that. Please, everyone, buy tickets. No, no, buy no, as no, many no, tickets no. as you can. Well, do, I want yeah, no, Jacob do. to go to Edinburgh. <laughs> I do, but I, I don't, I don't know why I agreed to it. I, I don't buy tickets to the Saturday. Is what I say because I do think I'm going to pull the Saturday because I'm. Um, uh, because I'd rather do anything than do a show. <laughs> well, Arsenal's first home game. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I am actually. I, I won't talk about it too much while on camera, but I'm, I'm doing some more stuff with the club now. But any, anyway, right. um, uh, yeah, Ed- Edinburgh is like it is little England. Yeah, do you know, do you know what I mean? It's, it's 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 like if they tried to do a little fucking like Madame Two Swords London in Scotland. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, I yes, yeah, so it's a schooner schooner scorer. I'm not going to be able to say that. <laughs> Schooner Scorer. So he, he's got this kind of placeless accent from the north, right? Yeah, and he and he does these weird things and he's kind of gaining a bit of traction, but he's in this just like now in this like social media influencer and there's there's a bit of a crossover and it's, yeah, it's who you guess would be crossing over with him because this person is on everyone else's fucking videos. Top Jewel? No, it's fucking Johnny Fisher again. You can't get rid of him. Big John? <laughs> Big, no, Little John. Little Big John. <laughs> he needs to be training. He's hanging out with the Schooner Get Scorer. The fucking gym. Look, I think you've the best got, way. You've got to fight Alan Babbage in a few weeks. <laughs> Stop hanging around with the Schooner Scorer. The Schooner Scorer is part of this like milieu of like Clapham, Ballum, Tooting, Nutters who have no self awareness about their horrendous vibe and aesthetic and actually lean into it. Now, I went back as far as I could to try and understand what the Schooner Scorer was into the annals of history. This is the first video I could find. All right. Now, this is him reviewing a beer at. Possibly the most famous pub in London, the French House in Soho. Mm-hmm. Again, he's not telling anything people that people don't know. And two things to look out for here. A, check out how fucked he is. And B, watch for the bouncer in the background. All right, here we go. Schooner scorer. Six seconds there, a bit scoring. Just going to pause it. <laughs> Jacob's not got his headphones on. Jacob's not going to be able to listen to it. <laughs> it was only when you press play, I was like, oh, that's stupid again. How will I hear? What, will, uh, what would have been amazing there is if Jacob had just tried to style that out and done the whole podcast without being able to listen to the clips that we were playing. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> right. there, there was a bit of me that was like, maybe I'll just let Jake listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit bored of this. Right, so as I said... I mean, check the oh, vibe, first of all, off, and then check how fucked he is. Watch out for the bouncer in the background. All right, here we go. Schooner scorer. Six seconds there, a bit scoring a schooner. <laughs> We're at the French house, one of the best places I've ever been in Soho. <laughs> the best place Where I've ever been. been. My man, he knows me. Look at this guy. He's fantastic. He's amazing. I love him. That's great. One of the best bouncers I've ever known in Soho. Watch this. What we're drinking today is a <laughs> cider. It's not a log of beer. We're mixing it up. It's a sassy cider. It's a low percentage. It's from Normandy. So something different. Let's try it. One sip, one schooner. You know the game. Chugs the log. Whoa. Of it. Absolutely belts it. I wasn't expecting that. You taste the apples. Spring, summer day. I'm skipping through an orchard. It's it's pretty good. It's pretty well. <laughs> They, I asked What's them he if they know anything about? about it. They said no. They said they know it's a cider and it's low ABV. <laughs> I'm gonna hit it with a 4.3. I don't know if it's any better, like any higher than that. What alcohol. is he talking about? As a score, I mean the place you already know is an 8.0. I think the cider, pretty good for a cider, <laughs> some point one. Wow. So that's his that vibe. Is mental. And it's got gradually more and more kind of production values and more Clapham as it's gone on. And what it plays into is, I don't know if you remember we did when we were talking about someone else, we talked about that guy, Miles, the guy that's like 24 and works in finance. And he did the video where he's like, I'm 24 and I work yeah, in yeah, finance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, they, he's, gone, he's gone off out on his own now. He started making quarter zips and selling them. And that's his job now, right? But his whole vibe, and Schooner Score is very close, his whole vibe is Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. 
Mm. And to the point where he's done clips of him acting out Patrick Bateman. He's wearing the kind of like cufflink shirts. He's wearing the, the, fan, the old suits, double-breasted. Now, Patrick Bateman from American Psycho is a rapist and a murderer. <laughs> And that's the vibe they're going yeah, for. Yeah, but the, the problem is true crime has made everyone think it's sexy. Right. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's so into true crime now. And it's like, so so, so many women are like, oh, do you not think he's a bit, ooh, it's like, well, fucking cut your head off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the, that was mad. Yeah. It, 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 like, so, so my immediate comparison or like point of reference is Top Jaw. Yes. Right? Other posh it's lads. It's a similar vibe. But, but Top Jaw, Top Jaw, to give them some credit, mm. They love it. Sorry, just pause there because my son was screaming blue murder. <laughs> um, like my point of reference for this guy is kind of top jaw. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit top jaw. A, the you know posh, but B, it's like reviewing stuff. Stuff. Where, where the, in a short format. Yeah, yeah. But top jaw to, to give them some credit. They know their hummus. They, well, they know, they know their hummus, but they fucking love their hummus. Yeah, like, they, they, love they would it. marry the hummus. Do you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? It's, it's, it's like yeah. oh, if you found that geezer shagging a pot of hummus, no, you, you would, would not be surprised. Be surprised yeah. This guy, Dick in a bottle of sabra. This guy's doing it like there's a gun to his head. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I've got to do it, so here we go. Um, and yeah. do you know what the vibe is? Like you say, it's like he's got, because he's the most boring, flavourless, fake northern rich man ever, yeah. he's got no interest. He's got nothing to say. But social media means he has to say something. Dude, but it, this is the thing. And, and it's, it's always, again, I, and I suspect he's Gen Z. I suspect he's a bit younger. He looks young. By the way, can I just say Top Jaw? Mm. I found that the other day. They've been going for years. Have they? They've been making videos for like 10 years. Wow. I, I um. Long way of getting around this. Basically, my, my um, I'm getting pally with the dads now on at, at, at my daughter's at school. I'm getting really in with a few of them, and one of them is the owner of Patty and Bun. You know the burger restaurant, right? I, I, he might listen to this actually. So I, I um, we love Patty and Bun. Send us some free samples. Well, no, I really do. But I, I, any, I don't know why. <laughs> I do know why. It's because I had the fucking electro bong. Cheers, Paul. I was, I was googling Patty and Bun. Right. <laughs> you know that thing we spoke about before, where like when you're that stoned, like an image of a burger becomes pornography. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like Patty and I was like, fuck it, Patty and Bun review, and um. Top Jaw come up. They like ten pa- years ago. Ten years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but but even back then, they're like, we've just got a burger. Oh my god, this burger. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and it's like you know, like when we when we did Top Jaw. Yeah. We, I mean, that guy, that guy's too much. Do you know what I mean? He, mm. he can't stop making noises. He's like, uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, the Devonshire. Uh, <laughs> right? This guy is just like, yeah, well, uh, this guy's fucking phoning it in. Yeah. He's also he's he's do like. Uh, top jaw works because they they go to like you know kiln and and, and like they're like all these like like proper nice places. You might and not I, know, I know the French house is like a nice place, but that, that glass of beer is good. Like it works when you're watching someone consume something you want to consume. Right. As a stoner, that's how it works. <laughs> As a frequent got, electro bong user. Yeah, yeah. He's got the. Deadest looking fucking beer in the world, and he's like six deep on a Saturday night. And it, yeah, yeah, it's like the, the 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 being forced by social media to do something, and him sat around going, "I need to do something." And like, what do I like? I like having six pints of nameless cider <sighs> in Soho whilst yeah. wearing a shirt with three buttons open. Just exactly. do that, mate. But but do you know what? And it, this this. <laughs> There's a real thing now, and it's it's guys who look like him, and mm. I, I suspect he's been to like a decent uni, mm. you, and, and he's definitely been to a decent school, <laughs> right? And do you, do you remember, again with Top Jaw, there was an episode where it, oh, there was a clip we watched where he was like, "We're just having good pints, me and our friends. We're gonna go in there. We're gonna film a Top Jaw. It's gonna be bloody great." Yeah. And it is like, "Is Ernest?" He-? He said, what did he say, Jeremy? He was like, "Is Ernest Hemingway in there?" Yeah. No, sir. Yeah. <laughs> but, but basically, they've they've got this thing. That there is something kind of enlightened about going to the pub. <laughs> that like like going to the pub is like this huge like thing that's so cool and important. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's fucking. Do you think that's? It's, it's not the it's, fetish. The fetishization of going to the pub. Yeah. Often from people that like. And again, I'm not Oliver Twist. I come from like a l- lower middle class, upper working class family, but. When you're from Stevenage, you spend a lot of time in pubs growing up. And it, yeah. Our generation, you spend a lot of time in pubs. You get given some money for the pool table. You're it, just in the pub. And it's, it's, it's not, it's not anything to celebrate. No, it's just a It's just it's a just, thing. It's, it's what just, everyone you're just does. There. That's just where you go. <laughs> I mean, for me growing up, it was actually the. And it, you know, this wasn't a political thing, but we used to go to the con club, right. conservative club. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, you know, if there'd have been a fucking labour club or social club yeah, yeah, before yeah. someone tries to be like, "Are you a Tory?" Like yeah, but well, you, mo- like, it's just where you'd go. It's yeah. just like if, if subsidised beer. If, you know, if my mum was working of a weekend and I was with my dad. Mm. That's where we'd go. Yeah. and it wasn't like 
It wasn't like, oh, we're in the pub. The pub, the pub. Oh, oh. Like, it's just like, yeah, just, it's the pub. <laughs> there's, a, there's a guy who, um, there's a guy who does, he's a guy called Jimmy Mack. Yes. The TikToks yeah, about yeah, pubs. Yeah. What yeah, are they yeah. called? De- uh, like London Dead Pub or a Pint Inn. Yeah. He's yeah. quite funny, I think. He's quite funny, but he's kind of doing it. As well. I, I, by the way, I chat to him. I chat to him online. Like, right. I do like him. But he is kind of doing it. I think it. there is at least an irony there and there is, yeah, an, there is yeah. like and, a and he, funniness also, to him. Also, also, like, rather than being like, I'm in this pub. and it's good. Like, he does very much big up kind of, you know, like the Park Tavern or somewhere in Finsbury Park. Yeah. But he will also go to Brewdog and be like, this is fucking shit. And he did a really funny video recently where he went, I'm going to try the pub that everyone's talking about. And he went to a pub called the Devonshire Arms, but it was in like Sutton. I really... <laughs> <laughs> also, oh, the fair. only... You're just, off the hook, Jimmy. It's, fu- it's funny that you brought him up as well, because I was looking for information on the Schooner Scorer and I typed the Schooner Scorer into Twitter. And Has he tweeted The, the only tweet about him is by Jimmy Mack. And it says, sir, we have compromised the Schooner Scorer to an indeterminate end. <laughs> <laughs> he lives around the corner, Jimmy. He's all right. But no, it, yeah, it's this fetishization of going to the pub. It's making the pub feel like this big cultural thing. Mm. And it, it's 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 only ever done by people who weren't raised in pubs. Yeah. And, do, and do you know what I mean? It's only ever done by people who go into the pub wasn't an everyday thing. Who, who go into, and and it, it's, it's what it means is <laughs> this is what allows the Devonshire to exist and for there to be a waiting list for a fucking table and for it to cost eight pounds a pint of Guinness yeah, yeah. because people start seeing going to the pub like going on a fucking holiday. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You check the review of the pub first. You see what Top Jaw thought of it. You see what Schooner Score thought of it. And then <laughs> yeah. you go down and the cider, you could write a fucking poem about it while it's in your mouth. It's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be an everyday occurrence that you spend eight pounds on for two pints and you come out. Where's the bell? Yeah, um, yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, very, it's, very, it's a very strange thing. And like you say, it plays into the fetishization of the pub. But that's where it started, right? Which is quite this quite specific thing of like, get a drink, do this score. But like, Mm. he doesn't even know what the side is called or what ABV is. And by the way, I don't want him to like be more in depth on the scoring. Like, I don't give a fuck what he thinks about it. I don't want him to be like, this is an American IPA. It's brewed in fucking. I don't give a shit. Shut up. But like, at least if you're going to do it. Like, know what the name of the thing yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Commit to it a bit. I mean, I mean I, you know, like we said about Tom Gilby, like, when someone really knows their shit, it's right. watchable. It's, yeah, but it's yeah, if, But if you're going to film it, like, you, you sort of watch that and you're like, why have you done that? Yeah, it's you know, very strange. <laughs> it's like, you haven't really tried. You, you, He's done that as if it's a bit of coursework that's due in on the Monday. Yeah, Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? He just had to get it done. It's so he's, he's reviewing a drink he doesn't know the name of at a pub that literally every single p- person who watches that video, because they're all from London, they're all his age, they all know that that pub exists and yeah, they've yeah, all been yeah. there already. Yeah. So it's like, I don't really know what he's trying to do. The next video is the kind of creep of this thing where it's become more of like a lifestyle brand now. So there's a few things that are name checked in this video that you would like, I, I can't tell if he's leaning into the fact that he's a wanker or he just doesn't know that he's a wanker. Excuse me, what's up? Oh, you're right, I should text her. Oh, man, there's a mascara glass. Empty? Yeah, it's for later. Still a bit of acting going on here. Text. 4% German lager. Schooner scorer here. 60 second snippet scoring a schooner. We're here in Bassey Park, one of my favourite places to go running. I was actually out running this morning. Third place in the park run. Third place in the park run. That, that means he's a serious so runner. Anyway, now, what are we doing? What are we doing? Crabs. The Cheney crabs are absolutely smashing some army team, I believe. And what we're drinking is Bex. It's a 4% He's drinking a warm German bottle of Bex. Let's see. Pour it in, in Bassey like Park, that, watching tag rugby. Because it's a Pilsner. It tends to be lighter. The difference between a Pilsner and a lager. Pilsner has sort of a lighter colour to it. Let's see. Bex, German, 4%. One sit, one schooner. Let's see the score. What is this? What does this do? It reminds me of like being sick. You go to a house party, people are buying them because it's buy two for one at Tesco. Not really my favourite beer. You can tell by the shelf life. It's like a year and a half because they pasteurised the fuck out of it. Full of chemicals. Used to be good until AB and Bev bought it in 04. To be honest now, it's just full of chemicals. It is still your pills and it's light and crisp, but I genuinely don't like it. 2.2. So now he's kind of got into the like, I know the beer, I know about pasteurisation. But what, what is that? What's he, what's oh, he I doing? I think it's bollocks though. Like, <laughs> he's like, all made like, up. Well, it's, it's, it's also like, like the way he's like, oh yeah, when someone bought it in 04. It's like, don't refer to 04 as if A, you know that, or B, you were even fucking alive. He was 10. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. He wasn't even 10 in 04. <laughs> no, yeah, probably not. Like, but it's, it, 
I, I mean, I, I don't think anything's really changed there apart from A, he's sober, and B, he's done what we're going to do eventually is go on Fiverr and yeah. get some poor little fucker in India to, to edit the video for you. Right. And in you know, in his case, it's it's got some weird skit at the start where there's some <laughs> joke of what's in what's in your pocket, pal. Oh yeah, I really need to text her. That doesn't make sense. What does that mean? <laughs> Is you, it the phone what, or his what, dick? Is it, well, I, I think the implication, you know, the what's in your pocket thing, that usually means you've got, you, a, boner, you got a boner. But it's like, like if you were at the park and you had a boner, it, like say me and you were at the park and I'm like, mate, and you're like, oh yeah, I've got a, I've got a boner. I really need to text her. I'm like, what? If we were at the park together. Why would that it, make the boner go down? <laughs> if we were at the park watching rugby and you've got a fucking erection. Mate, oh, there's something in your pocket. Oh, yeah, I need to text her. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you got an erection? <laughs> yes, I have, because I need to text her. That's what I mean about the Patrick Bateman. This guy's desperate to be caught. He's desperate to be banged up for life. I think you might be right. I think you might be right. He's, it, I mean, it, Also, it's, both it's of still... us down the park, both in our England shirts with our names on the back. And probably if we're down the park, your kids are on the playground as well. <laughs> yeah, Have you got a boner? Yeah, I need to text her. We, we, wee, um, wee, wee. Wee. <laughs> That's it. Gonna lose me job. <laughs> I'm like, a genuine, genuine mistake. I always have I'm popular where I am. <laughs> at work. <laughs> it's the only podcast in the UK where you will get verbatim script from the, the board nonsense. And we won't even give it context <laughs> before we do it. I, uh... I, I, I mean, it, the, the, thing, I, the point I'm trying to make is, I think essentially, he's sober. Yes. He's been shot better. Mm -hmm. he's, he's got some insane skit that doesn't make sense at all. But it's still <laughs> the same dead-eyed rubbish <laughs> that he's, he's reciting dead -eyed from a Google Doc. It's completely dead-eyed. Like, there's no life or soul in it. He still does it. Also, it's like, it's got loads of chemicals in it. What the fuck are you talking about? It's, it's, it's a beer. And, and like, why, why would you... I mean, also, he could just, sorry, just still, he really gives himself away. He's like, um, it's like, you know, you'd go to a house party and people just have these because they're two for one. What? Yeah. They're two for one. When have you ever seen bottles of Bex two for one? That's like the, the perfect telltale of like, you've never been to a party in your fucking life. <laughs> you've never life. been to a Tesco you've, Express no, in your no, life. No, you've never been invited to a party. You've never bought, like, two for one. That, that bottle, it's never two for one on a bottle of Bex. It's yeah. never two for one on a multi pack. Right. <laughs> And we would know. No, it's not. Well, no, we would. We would. Well, I, I would. I would know. Th that you would never, ever, ever get that offer. On. You, we, we, we could both recite the offers you get on, on yes. beers now. Like big, big boxes of cans and big boxes of bottles will get reduced every yeah. now and then to by about twenty percent or so. Yeah, yeah, you go down to like ten pounds, twelve pounds, something like that. And what you will get is it used to be three for five pound on big bottles, now it's three for six pounds on big bottles. That's, I know. I know about the big bottles. I know yeah, about the three yeah, big yeah. bottles. <laughs> That's it. I buy those big bottles and I say I'll have one today and one tomorrow three and I drink all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours later, you're fucking you're reminding the missus of that thing her mum said that it didn't actually pass the test of what was passable dinner conversation. Uh, like, just going it, to the recycle. Oh yeah, yeah it's three madries in there. I should. Three madries. <laughs> <laughs> but it, that, like, it, it, there, there were just so many things here where, again, it's like to give Top Jaw some credit, mm. they know what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah. They, they, like, you know, the, when he's telling me that some fucking Palestinian restaurant in Soho's got the best hummus he's ever had, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I reckon you've eaten a lot of hummus, mate. This guy's never bought a beer. Yeah, it's very strange. And with with Top Jaw, we spoke about like the the, the, the posh boys are no longer afraid anymore during the new labor era it was all about well i have to try and play down how posh yeah, yeah. i am yeah. and i have to try and make it more like i'm a you have normal boy you, you, you have to be sorry about it and now it's like he's there he's talking about coming third in the Battersea park run which probably means he does about 5k in like 17 minutes i reckon which is mad because yeah. i think probably about a thousand people do that every week he's talking about watching his mates play tag rugby he's talking about all of his mates tapering to do the london marathon oh, mate, yeah. and he stood in ones with common and it's like you should be in a fleece. Yeah, in a fleece. And it's, it's, like, it's like someone's got a tick list of the stereotype of what he's fulfilling. It's and like, he's like trying to do it. London he's trying rugby. to be like the Patrick Bateman of Ones with Common. And it's like, have some shame. Yeah, Why are you not yeah. ashamed? Yeah, no, you, you are right. <laughs> I'm so ashamed. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. I do stand up comedy. There's nothing more <laughs> shameful than doing stand up comedy. But do you know what? When he, when he, when he was like, oh, I'm in Batsy Park, I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm getting married there in a couple of years. <laughs> 
Nothing would ruin my wedding day more. If it, you know, like I'm looking into my, my wife's eyes, and I'm like, this is the best day of my life. And I was just in the background, I just see him and some cunt with a tripod going, I'm fucking oh, yeah, it's a San Miguel, actually, in 06. I, I, I'd I'm walk fucking, out. I'm fucking I'd, yeah, yeah. I'd shake, shake my father in law's hand. Very sorry, mate. You pick up the bill. I'm fucking out. <laughs> I'm absolutely doing it. I'm going to start saving now. As you're coming on to the, to the dance floor for your first dance, out comes the schooner scorer, paid for by me. Well, uh, mate, schooner scorer here, 60 my, seconds tip at scoring a schooner. <laughs> my dream is you're going to hire Tim Oliver. And you, oh, no, hire. Brent's definitely going to be there. That's a given. That is a given. Brent's doing, Brent's doing the John, dance. Would you get Big John? Oh, my God. That's my dream, is that the Patreon becomes so big and we save every single penny of the Patreon. We never take a penny out of it. And then for your wedding day, we have Big John Fisher, John Fisher Jr., Tim Oliver, the, the David Brent impersonator, the schooner scorer, and I will pay to fly David Clark over first class from Boston and him doing a locked in at your wedding. <laughs> 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 all of the what. listeners are going to be there the spreadsheet boys are going to be there Shane and Ben who bought us the England tops are going to be they're there they're definitely going to be there Paul's going to write your best man speech as a return <laughs> favour and I'll tell you what Josh Peel will still somehow be busy <laughs> Sorry, man. We'll tell everyone that Josh Pugh's coming to the wedding and he'll pull out a month I'm, before. I'm, I'm taking a professional break from weddings at the moment. <laughs> Sorry. Really? You're still doing the fucking videos though, aren't you? I wonder what you're trying to promote. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. Sorry, mate. We will, we will, <laughs> we'll Sorry. pay for Josh Pugh to do a set there. And the schooner scorer will go round scoring everyone's schooners for them. <laughs> no one will be able to take a sip I'd of their drink. Him, I'd glass him. Yeah, that's, that's one thing, actually. Oh, no, I don't, I'm not going to get into this now. <laughs> My don't get into it if it's if threatening violence on the schooner scorer. No, no well, no, my cousins glassed each other. It's, it's, it's a long story. It's a <laughs> Do you reckon the schooner scorer's cousins have ever glassed each like, other? Do you know what? There are times. There are times. Where, like, I, I'd never say it anymore, but like in years gone past, I used to describe myself as like a working class comedian. It's mm. very much, you know, I was with a big management company and they sort of push you to find your niche mm. or whatever. And I cringe now thinking of myself as working class. But then I get a phone everyone's, call. Everyone's got to have a hook. Then I get a phone call last week being like, because... I mean, I won't say her name, but it's like, you know, Tara's glassed Wayne's son again. They've got to go back to court. And I'm like, yeah, I'll probably get away with it. To be again? Fair. <laughs> yeah, it has happened before. And that, that is their names. Anyway, we need to move on. Right, let, next video. <laughs> um, the, the schooner. Uh, this... I keep forgetting the people listening to this. I, do you know what? Mm. I'll just quickly say, sorry. It is growing a bit now. More people, But also, I don't know about you. I've never pushed my mates to listen to this. No, no, And no. it helps because it means I can say whatever I want. Mm. And then, and my mate Jerome, bless him, he started listening. Mm. You know Jerome. Yeah, yeah, you? lovely lad. He he helped. He does. He did the photography for my tour poster. I messaged him about something the other day, being like, "Can you um, get me another one of those photos, mate, so the Live Nation could do the flyer?" Blah blah. blah. And he was like, no, uh, I'm not going to do that for you. And I was like, what, why? And he, he sent me this video of him watching the YouTube where I did like an impression. You know, I said about where I did a K-hole in Berlin, I hold his little arm. He's like, what do you mean little arm? That's the impression. He doesn't like it. <laughs> no, he's Sorry. done it again. Um, no photos for me. <laughs> so the, 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 in the, the, the journey of the schooner scorer, the next yeah. thing is that he did a collab with this like bizarre, <sighs> glammy American girl that does food reviews. And this is like, I just want to bring this up because this always has to go to this place and it's so awkward and so strange <laughs> hey guys it's kim here from london food london Guide, food guy some great news we are launching a brand new concept called sit and savor london food guy together with Scorer. look at him Unascora here super excited by this collaboration <laughs> we can't wait to show you the best pubs in the city Sat outside so a branch of pizza scenes, pilgrims <laughs> brewery tours and schooner scores as well as the best brews and bites London Pub has to offer. Stay tuned, we're super excited. Cheers. So it's like they sat down, they're like, we need someone to review pubs for the London Food Guide. Great name, by the way. And they've gone, who can we get? And they go, is there anyone out there that looks like... (laughs) Is there somebody who looks like... That's not what I said. That's not what I said or what I implied. Can we get him on camera wearing a fawn overcoat? And can we get him to kind of bizarrely... Do, he does that thing that posh people do where they kind of drop their Ds. Yeah, Super yeah, yeah. excited. Yeah, excited yeah, 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 to... yeah. It's almost an Americanism. Yeah, it? it's very I, strange. I do wonder whether we went to one of them international schools. You know what I mean? Where people almost get Yank accents sometimes. Mm. I wonder what... He, he, was do, he was doing this thing. like when, Allegedly. When, when she was speaking, he was doing this like stare at the camera. Like, yeah. Like... 
No, that's too far. I'm going to have to bleep that. <laughs> Don't um, bleep it. I'm going to have to bleep that. Everything I say is a joke. You can't find the truth. That's what Joe Budden says. And they live in America and they love suing, so you can't do that. So yeah, we're fine. Well, I think when I look at him as well, and this is like with the <laughs> with the, the main bloke out of Top Jaw, yeah. like for someone whose like, thing is like drinking loads of beer or whatever, unbelievable shape. Like unbelievable shape. Yeah, yeah. Runner shape. Yeah. Good looking guy. Yeah. Good head of hair. Why do the posh lads always have good heads of hair? They're bred like horses. They're bred. They're, they're, they're thoroughbred. Like like he he. He's a the, thoroughbred. The dad would have only mated with a woman who's got similar genetics. He would have checked out the line. That, mate, you think I'm joking? They do that. They genuinely. You they do yeah. That? Are, are you kidding me? <laughs> the, uh, those echelons of society. <laughs> mm. You do not impregnate a bird unless you, you've had a good look at a family tree. That's one hundred percent true. And mm. they, they check for everything. No one. They is... don't want any kind of defects. They don't want anything that will f- they want tall. They want hair. They want teeth. Do you they reckon want that I know it happens. <laughs> How do you know it happens? Oh, I couldn't tell you that. No. <laughs> but no, no, I couldn't tell you that. But uh... me and my, me and a friend of mine were talking recently, and you know, Belgium. In Belgium, they've got this like one of their like national stereotypes is that they're paedophiles. Did you know that? And we I were like, Finn Taylor said it before, but I thought he was joking. No, so and we, me and my friend were talking about this, and um, I was like, I wonder why that is. My friend googled it, and it turns out there was like a really high profile case in Belgium in the 90s of like a serial paedophile and like the police had missed it loads of times and it gave rise to this um <laughs> this this like assumption that the Belgian at the highest echelons of Belgian society there was a secret network of paedophiles that were being all protecting each other and that's where the stereotype comes from and we were talking about that and being like oh yeah there's a secret network of paedophiles protecting each other in Belgium and we're like well really glad that doesn't happen here and it's like Prince Andrew just like in the background of something well okay it's a shame that that's the the segue that gets us onto this. Um, I have got some connection with the Freemasons. Okay. Do you know that? Did um, you know that before? I know that we used to go and drink in a pub in Hoban where the Freemasons would meet and you would kind of nod at them. <laughs> <laughs> I knew some of them. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite in, but then I wouldn't be able to tell you if I was in. <laughs> But no, I'm, I'm, Jacob's, I'm, Jacob's I'm, uh, Freemason exclusion letters are being put in the post right now. He's done it again. I'm, 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 uh, You're connected. Yeah, I'm not going to say I'm in, but I'm not going to say I'm out. Let's just say that. And I've met some people and, and you know, I've greased some palms. Right. And uh, I can tell you that that breeding thing is true. But you've, oh, you found out this information. He, 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 through the Freemasons. Like a, a boy like that, a boy like that, yeah. you, do, you, you do your research. Yep. Now, I, now, look... <laughs> You might find you might find that distasteful. You might find that a bit of a weird thing to say. All I can say is, it, you know, I wish I'd had a better look at my missus. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob kicked, <laughs> both k- kicked out of the Freemasons and divorced in the same episode. You know the best. I got up the dust before I met her mum and dad. Did I meet? I'm like fucking bald, mental. Fucking hell! I've got to pay for a hair transplant and therapy when they get old. <laughs> oh my god! I hope she doesn't listen. The best. To this. You know the, the best and the worst thing about this podcast is that you could never predict where it's going to end that up. I have to go. That might. Have to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more than happy. There's fucking more that's got to go in this episode. It's going to stay at the moment. Right, let's go. Let's go. Let's get next through. video. <laughs> I'll make sure Lana doesn't um, listen. I'm uh, going to keep that in The next time. video is this is the, the 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 schooner, and this is again late period schooner. <laughs> um, actually, you know what? I'm going to fuck this one off. I'm going to skip to this one. <laughs> Uh, we're going to miss the Johnny Fisher one because uh, there's. Because he's in it every fucking episode. Every week it's Big John. We might as well call it the fucking Big John podcast. We might as well be produced by Kung Po Media, which is his son's media company, where he makes he makes adverts for fucking chicken wing companies in Hull. <laughs> It might as well be the Big John show. Honestly, people are going to be watching this thinking, does John fucking pay for this? Are these two twerps in England shirts being sponsored by Kung Po Media? Every week. Here's what Johnny Fish is up to this week. Should we talk about Big John's post from last night? Yeah, why not? We talk about him every other fucking episode. Oh, my God. We should talk about this. So yesterday, Big John posted a picture of him with his daughter at dinner. I'm surprised he sees her. Oh, honestly. Oh my God, he's in Magaluf for more than he's he's, over there. He misses everything. They they put up a thing the other day. I I don't know how old his daughter is. She's like 16. It was like her... There was some kind of like prom or... um, It just made me laugh. They they had some kind of like big party 
at the Fisher House. Mm. Which, by the way, if you ask me to, I could draw a, a floor plan of the Fisher <laughs> House from memory. I've seen every inch of that fucking John house. Fisher's drawing up a restraining order I for could, us at the mate, moment. Uh, no, honestly, send me into Wix tomorrow. I could design their kitchen. I, honestly, I know it. Anyway, they had like a big party for the daughter in the back garden, and it just made me laugh because... Like, big John the Purple Post being like, just want to say a massive thanks to my wife who, who threw the best party for little Hetty and to my son who was the best, he was like the best bouncer you could ask for at that party. And I was like, you know, when he's like, my son was the best bouncer you could ask for, you're like, oh, what, your heavyweight boxer son? It wasn't, it was the daft lanky one. <laughs> it was the daft lanky one stood there with his big blonde hair, just like, all right, all right, I'm trying to keep it on these fucking 16 year olds. <laughs> anyway, John's missing his daughter's prom, whatever the fuck that was, because he's off in Magaloo throwing porn crack. I, think, I probably probably should have probably should have saved this for a rock revisit. <laughs> oh, so we're gonna yeah. have to re- revisit Big but John. You wanted it? to bring up a post that he put up. Oh my god, he <laughs> he put up a post. It's a picture, a beautiful picture of him with his daughter. They look really happy. They're sad dinner. Click the caption. The caption says, "Having a daughter makes you realise there's nothing you wouldn't do to stop her from being hurt. I would do time. I would do anything." <laughs> And then I think it said daughter bosh. It was daughter bosh. It was like, no quarter given or asked for. <laughs> and then did you see what the song was? No. Because I reposted it. And right. I put, posted it on the screen right account. And one of the writers probably being like, look at the fucking song. It was like, um, girl, ding, ding, ding. No. Ding. <laughs> You'll be, be a, a woman. woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's 10 o'clock at night. Oh. He's half cut. He's sat there. Oh, but that's the funny thing is it's the irony of something like that sorry we're trying to do a podcast about Schooner I've been slagging off on Mrs. Perrins we're talking about Big John again let's, let's fuck this talk about Schooner let's, let's do some Schooner and go home right <laughs> this is the first episode of three we've got to record today um, the final one is Schooner at the rugby and I just want to talk about his obviously he's a powerfully rugby pilled man we're on record about how we feel about the Six Nations is obviously worse mm-hmm. for the country mm-hmm. than drug dealing. Mm-hmm. If we stop the Six Nations, it have a better effect. Here's the schooner scorer at the Six Nations. Just check what he's wearing. All right, schooner scorer. Oh, Here we God. go. 60 seconds snippet scoring a schooner. It's dressed as Captain Jack Sparrow for those of you at home. Stadium in London. Look around. It's rugby sevens. Oh, is it the sevens? Oh, Even worse. Absolutely electric in a word. Electric. Tries flying around everywhere. I don't even know if you can hear me right now. Pissed again. Doesn't know what it fucking is. One sip, one schooner, you know the score. They're all dressed as Captain Jack Sparrow. That sailed down really, really well. The goods and IPN, not as uh, heavy as a lager, not as gassy as a lager. I personally prefer it for a day session like today. Bloody perfect. Bloody perfect. It's going pretty high. 7.1. Now, what I'm going to say about this, he's dressed as Captain Jack Sparrow, and that is an expression of the upper class's powerful, powerful desire to black up in public. (laughs) Yeah. It's as close... Captain Jack Sparrow is as close as you can get to blacking up. Dreadlocks based in the Caribbean. Based in the Caribbean. He's got dark dark circles under the eyes. (laughs) He so desperately wants to black up. You can see every fibre of his being wishes that he was dressed as Rude Hullet. (laughs) Like those Dutch fans were recently. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it's just the the upper like when I went to uni, I did some I did some things at uni. I'm I'm not uh, I'm not proud of. We had a, a <laughs> chaps night. Careful, because it does sound like you're saying you're black. So. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, no, quite though. This is the thing. Everyone that I went to uni with that was from the same area as me. I was best mates with a bloke from Watford. All of us from similar backgrounds. We would turn up to these parties, and without exception, there would be at least two or three publicly educated people there private school people blacked up. fully blacked up and all of us were like what on earth are you doing this is like never been acceptable but no one has done it for about 50 years and every time these lads would be like what do you mean we used to do this all the time <laughs> there was once and Long i uniform day at school they're all getting the they, they, i think they might do i think they're what? talking about talking God. about the practices of the upper classes selecting their mates based on hereditary features the other thing they love to do is black up they can't get enough of it now once and now i know where these four guys work and with one picture they could all be sacked from goldman sachs wherever they work now all four of them dressed up as barack obama fully blacked up as barack obama can you imagine 
And like we went up to them. At what point when you're applying the stuff are you not like <laughs> Ooh. This doesn't feel right. Uh, uh, and oh. Oh, This isn't good. <laughs> oh dear. And I think when we went up to them, um, because this would be a feature of it. It's like we'd get drunk and then obviously we'd be like, I mean, everyone's looking for a fight anyway. And then it's like these. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm pretty sure one of them were like, one of them was like, he's the first black president. It's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> As if that's what Barack Obama dreamed of. If he makes office one day, he's lads called Rory. Fucking idiots in, oh the middle, my God. in the middle of York. Jesus. I don't know if Christ. we've explained the schooner score. I actually, do you know what? I think you've done a p- valuable public service using your inside information, which we won't say where he got it from. Yeah, oh, yeah, God, I've said some stuff in this. Episode. But we know no, now do, do, more do, do, about the upper classes than we did before. I, I, sum up the schooner score. The, the, what? <laughs> he feels like he's doing it because he feels like he has to. And I, I have to say, like, so, so you know. My, my experience of people who are privately educated go to nice schools and stuff is that what happens is you come out, you become a lawyer or a doctor, mm-hmm. right? But the, or, or a politician in or some cases. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, good job. Or like, as I say, there's a fella... Oh, he might listen. I, I don't care. <laughs> he, he, there's a, there's basically, there's a fellow who goes to my daughter's school, one of the dads, and he, he I, you know, <laughs> get a vague impression he comes from a nice background. Right. And he, he, he runs Patty and Bun and he's got another mate who owns... Like he was like, oh, my mate from school owns, and it was like a, a fancy pizza chain in right, right, right. And, and, and I remember saying to my missus the other night, I was like, when when people came out of like school like fifteen years ago, were they just handing out fucking fast food chains? Whereas now it's like they're handing out like cameras yeah. and concepts for YouTube channels, yeah. and it's like this guy is like, well, yeah, that's what you do now, isn't it? You do a YouTube channel, you go to the yeah, bloody yeah, rugby, yeah. dress up, and have an East Coast RPA, yeah, and you know what? It's more drinkable. But it's like he's made none of the effort. He hasn't even got the little mic. You know, they have the little mic, yeah, the little road mic, little yeah. like lapel mics yeah, they yeah. have nowadays. It like the script is shit, the concept is shit. He doesn't know what he's drinking no, half no, the no. time, and it like yeah, it, it just feels so half. And and it's one of those where you go like, we. What we said with Tom Gilby, when someone loves what they're talking about, you, you like can to listen to them for hours. Yeah. And and as annoying as Top Jaw are, fair fucks. They, they really hummus. like that hummus. Yeah, yeah they're, they're <laughs> they really can't into get enough it. Of it. Whereas this guy, and, and you know, ch- dressed as dressed as Jacks. Do you remember? Do, do you remember? Do you ever know a guy called Charlie Rabbler from Stevenage? I know the name. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of Charlies in Stevenage. Well, but in this Charlie, knew his Charlie. He, basically, he he did so much drugs for a couple of years that he he did just dress as. Uh, Jack Sparrow for two years. Did he? Two years he was Jack Sparrow. I mean, I remember like it was around the time I was like 21 at the time. My sister had just started going out and she was out in Hitchin once. She texted me, she was like, like, Can you call me? And I was like, Yeah, call her. She was like, There's a man who won't stop harassing me and my friends in a smoking area. He's dressed as Jack Sparrow. He says he knows you. I was like, Oh, fucking hell, Rabbler. <laughs> to call him get away from my sister. He's like, Well, I will, but I'll have to return to my ship. He's like, Just fuck off, Rabbler. <laughs> oh <laughs> my like god Jack Sparrow. anyway yeah fuck this guy <laughs> fuck the Schooner score right? I, 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 I'm going to say it now worst one in a while oh, be, be, yeah. because he's just half arsed half arsed at least if he was into it like you could say oh he's a he's a beer nerd and he's a little kind of Patrick Bateman freak yeah. but he loves his beer but this guy is just I don't, think he, I don't think he's ever bought a beer in his life no the two for one Bex thing fucked me yeah that is bollocks that is absolute we see bollocks. you Schooner score yeah, we you know, fucking know you've never bought a two for one Bex in your life that doesn't exist that's never happened and stay away ha- from ones with common people yeah. stay away from Ballam the I'm gonna, Schooner score. I'm going to move my wedding <laughs> The Schooner Scorer could be around any corner. We hope that we've warned you about him. We hope in a way that you can avoid the Schooner Scorer. Uh, Thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next week. Mm